if you ingest something that you like, it tastes good to you, but then you ingest something that's even sweeter or even more savory, and then you go back to the food that you ate previously, well, you don't like it as much. And that might seem like a duh, obviously, but that shift in perception can be blocked by blocking the shift in dopamine. And so this really speaks to these peaks and valleys in dopamine that I mentioned before and how your experience of anything is going to depend on your prior experience of other things that evoke dopamine. Big dopamine release makes it more challenging to experience more big dopamine release. So dopamine is one of those things that you don't want too high or too low for too long. It's all about staying in that dynamic range and that's going to be different for everybody. Now, there are circumstances in which increasing levels of dopamine is desirable and advantageous and clinically helpful. A good example of this would be the drug Welbutrin, also called Bupirin, which increases dopamine and norepinephrine. Welbutrin Bupirin was developed as an alternative treatment for depression because some people who take the so-called SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which as the name suggests, increase serotonin, suffer from serotonin-related side effects things like decreased appetite, decreased libido, or sometimes increased appetite, or other side effects that they don't want. 